Hi, my name is Jonathan Katz Moses, and today we're going to build this box upside down. The reason it's called the upside down box is we build the entire project as one piece, and then in the final step, we cut the lid free from the bottom and it fits perfectly on the top. You get really tight fitting lids this way because if your box is out of square, or you sand one side more than another, or plane too much over here, there you have a rounded corner because when you release your lid at the end, it's gonna fit perfectly on the top. Today we're gonna to build this out of wangi and walnut. It has wangi splines. We start by milling up our lumber. We cut rabbits on the top and the bottoms of our pieces. Cut grooves for the lid and the base. We're gonna glue everything together, put our splines in, and then in one of the last steps, release the lid. So, here we go. Dust collection. It's important to write some stuff down. This is going to be where the lid sits on. This is going to be your lid. So we're gonna cut some kerfs into the inside of this box for the top and the bottom. It's gonna be important you know the interior dimension of your box, the, out, the outside dimensions of your box, the depths of your kerfs, the distance between your kerfs, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna do kind of a raised panel type lid. I'm gonna cut in a place where the lid still is a little bit proud of the top of the box, even though it's in the interior before we cut it. Uh, the other thing that's really important is the thickness of your sides. It's very, very important you have that as exact as you can because when we go to cut the lid free of the box, it's gonna be important that we don't cut all the way through. So now you can see we have the dado for our lid and the dado for the bottom of our box. And now we're gonna cut the bottom and the lid to size. And then when we separate our box, we're gonna cut right in between there to release the two. Our test piece fits. It's, it's tight, but, but not so tight that it won't move. And so we're gonna go ahead and cut our pieces. All right, so we got our rabbits cut. We're gonna do a little test fit. All right, so now that you have, now that we've dialed in our lid and our bottom, you're gonna wanna sand the inside of your box to 220. Did that off camera because nobody wants to watch sanding. So what I like to do when I'm gluing up a small box like this is I use blue tape instead of clamps. Uh, you don't need tons of clamping pressure and blue tape when it's flat and you pull them together, 
really tightens up a box and it's a lot easier to get it square. So what I do is I take something like a straight edge. This is our kind of scrap piece of wood that we're gonna use to glue up on. So if any glue drips on it, we don't care. Piece of double stick carpet, uh, carpet tape right there. And so we'll take our straight edge, stick it there. And we'll take our side pieces, uh, lay them out the way they go, which I've already labeled. So, so the way they go. Then what we can do, this instance here, we're just gonna work our way from the middle out, doesn't matter which way you do it. And then the beauty of this straight edge here is this is how you get all your pieces to line up. I like to do two pieces if you can of tape. We got our straight edge here and then, so what I do here is I press the piece with tape on it against the flat edge and then our next piece here. Um, you don't wanna angle it down, you wanna go flat against here. Press it down. Make sure you're getting good alignment, which we are. Perfect. And repeat. Dust collection. So I just removed the blue tape. We have our box here. There's the bottom and the top. And one of the beautiful things about building a box this way is as I check for square, we got square up. Oh. We're just a tad off there, probably by, I don't know, a quarter degree on uh, the two opposite sides. But the beautiful thing about building a box this way is it doesn't matter. When we cut our lid loose, it's gonna be off the same quarter degree that the box is. And so now what I'm gonna do is mark out where our lid, our bottom, and our curves are. And we've taken our handy dandy notes here uh, so we remember where that is. One of the things that's really important is that you use a saw blade that has a flat tooth pattern. When you look at like these Diablos, I don't know if you can see that there, but they have very pointy teeth and they leave a groove that has a spike to it. So it has a, so you want a flat bottom groove, otherwise you'll have a really annoying gap in your blade there. So now we're gonna cut some splines. We've got our shooting board here. We've got some spline material that I milled up to thickness. Um, one of the things I love about Wangi is this grain pattern on the side. It's so cool. Let's see if we can get that to focus there. Now what I like to do 
to eliminate as much work as possible later on is I like to chamfer the edges a little bit. Now, what's really important that you do here is that you gotta remember this is the bottom of your lid and it's gonna meet up right here. You want to stay away from chamfering these edges. Okay, before we release the lid, what we're gonna do is sand this to about 150 and then at the end, we'll do a final coat of 220. Now we need to mark out where our saw kerf is gonna go. So we know the very top of our kerf is at one and three thirty seconds. We're gonna start our cut. The very edge of our saw blade will go to, um, let's say uh, one and five thirty seconds at the very minimum. So we'll use that mark there to lay out our saw cut. All right, so now we're gonna separate the lid. The most fun part. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is take our test piece from earlier and set our saw blade height. We really do not want to cut all the way through this. So we're going to call that just enough. Next thing we're going to do is set the distance of our fence. Last thing to do, cut a test piece, make sure there's no issues. Our next step is to release the lid the rest of the way. You wanna use as thin of a kerf saw as you got and make sure that you're flush up against the edge of the lid. Take your time with this. Check on every couple strokes. Use your fingers as a guide on the other side. Make sure you're pushing it up against. And there we go. There's our raised panel lid. And look at that, a perfect fit. All that work and it looks freaking awesome. Now, take our little good buddy here. Okay, we've separated the lid. Uh, now we're gonna do our final finishing. We already sanded to about 150, 180. We'll do one final sanding of 220. We're on the corners, we have a couple saw marks. So what we're gonna do is trim the sides just a little bit. We're gonna do even strokes all the way around. Now you wanna be careful that you don't get tear out on your corners. So what I like to do, one, two, three chamfer passes on each side. So I'll basically do three strokes to every one, three, three chamfer strokes to every one flat stroke. And that'll help avoid tear out because it'll give a slight bevel to the corner so you don't catch the fibers on that last little piece of the miter when you're going through. All right, we'll let that dry for a couple hours, come back to a couple more coats, sanding 320 between each coat, and then finally we'll sand with uh, up to 2000 grit and then apply a final coat.
Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and subscribe to my channel. Please leave a comment below if you have any questions or you can email me or hit me up on my Facebook page, Cats Moses Woodworking. There's a link in the description. I have some great upcoming projects, a TV lift cabinet, a secret compartment man box, an inlaid dovetail jewelry box, and how to make center keyed box joints. I also have a lot more projects coming out in the future and I'll be doing build videos on all of them. I learned how to woodwork on YouTube and I really enjoy sharing what I have learned with you guys. Please follow my channel, like my Facebook page, and have a wonderful day. And if you want to buy me a beer, you can check out my Patreon page. The link is also in the description. Thanks so much and have a wonderful day.